Welcome to Mixing the Angel Spit Way. This is great if you want strong, harsh music. It's not so good if you want epic, melodic ballads. Because, fuck that shit. Okay, you're gonna have to be familiar with these terms. High pass filter. High pass filters let the highs through. See that? Wow, letting the highs through. No bass. Oh, a little bit of bass through. Now, no bass. That's a high pass filter. A low pass filter. Let's the lows through. Letting those lows through. Mm, crunchy, beautiful lows. Oh, oh, more highs. There you go. Bam. A low shelf turns down the bass to a degree. So everything below that point there, it gets turned down by whatever you want. And these are very handy. You can also turn them up. Oh, baby. Yeah. Side chaining. Side chaining is when you get a compressor and you tell it to kick in with another sound. So what we're doing with this one is I'm using the compressor to side chain against that kick. And I can turn down the amount of side chain so there's hardly any, or I can turn it up. Bam! EQing is good old fashioned EQing. Oh look, I'm EQing. Oh, second bits out, putting it in, that's EQing. You know what EQing is. Compression is uh, turning shit up and down from a certain volume by a certain percent. Ask YouTube for more information. Big Kicks Dipper is this crazy software that's free that will actually turn the track up and down according to that curve there on the beat. And it's so cool, yeah. And you control the amount it gets turned up and down to none. And you can automate that. I actually like Big big Kicks Dipper more than I like side chaining because you can control this curve and that curve makes a lot of difference. So then there's all the different frequencies. Subs are down here, mmm. So kind of 40 to 100 is the subs. Then you got the punch, the real thump, that's around about 80 to 120. Thump, right there, feel that thump? Mm. But up here, this is mud. And you can't do a lot with mud. Mud's kind of just crap. I want to get rid of that mud. So quite often you're going to EQ that shit out. 800 to 3K is where the character, the communication, and the definition of most sounds are. 2.5K to about 5K. This is where the hurt is. So if it's in symbols and shit like that, it hurts in that area. And then up here, around about 5K and higher, we get to this shit that we call air. So if you want to add like crystal clarity or the feeling of having more air or space, that's 5K and above. A listener can only absorb three or four sounds at once. Anything above this becomes confusing noise. So try and keep it to just drums, bass, vocals, and synths. And if you're gonna start introducing stuff, lay down the basic stuff first, and then start introducing stuff every four or eight bars, because you gotta let people hear it so they can understand it. And the whole purpose of this is you can only really achieve a mix if there's actual space in the music. Like you can't get clarity out of a wall of sound. For example, if I take, let's have a listen to verse one here. So what's going on here is that everything's got its space and you can hear the bleepy bleeps and the bass and the kick and everything else has got its space. So before we've even started mixing, we can actually get a mix because there's space. Not too many things are talking over the top of each other, so frequencies aren't fighting with each other to start with. Like I've gone through all of these bleepy sounds and everything else, and I've actually carved out space down to the 16th so you can hear everything. Don't drown stuff in delay, chorus, or reverb unless it's appropriate. Like a lot of people go, hey, I've got an arpeggiator, I'm just gonna put delay on it now. But the problem you're doing is that delay is gonna fill the sonic space and it's gonna cover all those micro details. And it's the micro details that gets your brain really excited about life. Reverb adds haze. 
So reverb's good on some things, but on other things, it's just gonna haze shit up and you don't want that. And sometimes it's gonna distract from the clarity of the song. Like if you just put reverb over everything, it's like, why do you fucking bother? God. An excessive chorus can really be a problem because it can throw stuff out of phase and it can just get lost in the mix. And it might sound great on big speakers, but chorus can destroy shit when it's on an iPhone or on, you know, shitty speakers. So fuck chorus unless you need it. Once I finish programming, I record all the parts into the computer because I use lots of hardware synths. So once they're recorded in computer, the sounds are actually concreted in. There's no turning back. You can't go back and endlessly tweak stuff. You've got to move into the mixing phase. So once I've recorded everything, I'll pull every single part into SoundForge. First thing I'm gonna do, this is me hand claps. That's actually modular hand claps, isn't it sexy? I'm not gonna use anything under 50 cycles in this. So I'm gonna put a high pass filter on the actual wave file itself. And I'm gonna get rid of everything under 50 Hertz. Wow, look at that. You don't even hear the difference, but there is a rumble in there. And that rumble and chaos that's come out of the modular is now gone. Next thing I do is I will normalize this baby. Hey, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Oh yeah, that's noise. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put what SoundForge calls wave hammer, which is this fantastic compression, beautiful compression. But the problem with that compression is not only does it turn everything else up, look at that noise. So what I have to do is I have to then go in using my um, noise filter and that's my cat. And I have to suck the noise out of the entire thing. Bam. Noise gone, except the cat who's now meowing at me. So I will do that with every single sound to clean it up so it's ready to rock, because I like rock. And when I talked about stripping out the frequencies you don't need, I'll take anything below 50 out of almost everything, like the pads, I'll cut them at 200. Most of the percussion is gonna be around 50. Snare, claps, with the hats and the little bleepy sounds, I'll pull 200 out of that, so everything under 200 hertz is gone. And I do this because the sound is clearer when you're processing it. And if you compress it, you're actually only compressing the frequencies that you care about and that you need to hear. So you're not using up the digital audio workstations processing. You're not taking up the processing space in the mix. You're focusing only on what you need. I do not high pass uh, the sub kick the main kick or the bass. And we'll get into all that stuff in detail in a minute. But this is the joy of using old shitty technology. It's very fucking noisy, but I love it. There are guides on how to EQ, snare, bass, and hats. But my only problem with that shit is you end up with snare, bass, and hat that sounds like everything else. I like each component to sound unique. Okay, let's talk about mixing some more. So the first thing I'm gonna do when I go into my mix phase is I'm gonna create 10 buses. A bus is a master track that you can assign a whole bunch of other tracks to, and then you can affect and compress and EQ and whatever that master track. And every track that's assigned to that master track is also going to be treated. Those buses are my sub kick and my sub bass. The regular bass is the next one, so everything that is bass but not sub goes in that one. The main drums, which is basically secondary kick, snare, hat, claps, whatever. Percussion is like random bits and pieces and blips and bloops that are sort of secondary. The lead is the lead synth, the guy that plays the riff. The pads are obviously the pads, synths is everything else. Then there's the side chain. So I will actually take a whole bunch of different tracks and put them into the side chain and shit's gonna get side chained. The bass side is the side chaining for the bass. We're gonna to get to all that in a minute. The backing vocals and the master vocals. Now, let's break this shit down. First thing we're gonna look up is the sub kick. With the sub kick, what I've done, because this is in the key of C, I've tuned that kick. So that is a kick that's kicking in C. The problem with C is it's very low. It is in fact 65 cycles. And 
that's really fucking low. Unless you've got really good speakers, you're not gonna hear it. So I put 3 dB at a one, uh, one octave width at 65. So right on that fundamental, it's, it's hit the pulse. Then about one octave higher at about uh, 120. I've also given it a bit of fat as well. Just turned it up a little bit. So there's some bit of balls down there. I've also taken the top end out because it's got a bit of a click to it. I wanted to get rid of that click. This is the sub bass. Now the sub bass is sitting up under everything being very sexy. High sub bass. It's also an uh, core is at 65, so I've turned it up 3 dB, one octave at 65, and I've given it a little tiny bit of juice at 480, 3 dB actually, just to give it a bit of a clarity thing. And you've noticed also, I have big kick stipper on this, and what that big kick stipper is just throwing that sub out of the way of the kick. So when I pull them both in together, that bass is just ducking below that kick a little tiny bit, so there may be funk in the free world. What I've done then, there's no EQing on these two lovebirds, but I have added basically a plugin that's going to compress a multiband compressor and just to make shit more ballsy. The other thing that's going out here is the uh, secondary kick. That's a beautiful fucking analog kick. It's lovely. So what's going on is it's just on the one and three because the snare is going to be on the two and four. And with that kick, because it came off the modular, there's so many frequencies in it. I actually put a um, multiband compressor on this one just to help it out. Like without the multiband, it sounds like this. Kind of lacking definition. And I just needed to bring those tops up. Then at 79 uh, hertz, I put a low shelf, took out 12 dB. That's just, there's a lot of subs in there. Like there's a lot of fucking subs in there. So that's just to take the subs out. And when the kids are all talking and happy, because we love the kids when they're talking and happy, they're talking a happy song like this. Nice and simple, love it, working it. Next thing that's going on is the bass. At 160 ish, I've taken out quite a bit of the lows. I've given it a boost at about one octave above the fundamental, so that's C, and the fundamental is 65, so it's about 130. And I've just given it a tiny little bump for a bit of clarity up at 3.5k. The other thing I've done with this chat is I've given it a uh, multi band compressor. And you'll notice if you know Cubase, this is the old version, because I love the old version of the multiband compressor. It's just relentless. Sounds like that without it. This lovely chap got bust out the bass output, and on the bass output, once again, I've got a master compressor, a multiband compressor, a bit of excitement as well. And I took out just some little bumps here and there, like at 120. There's bump out at 120. There's a bump out at 666 because, hey, Satan. And I put a little bump at 1800 just for a bit of clarity and about 7.3K for a bit of air. And a lot of this happened at the end of the mix so everything could slot together more sexily because sexy slotting is a good thing. That sounded so rude, what I just said. And that is also being bussed out, the bus side chain. We're gonna to get to the bus side chain very shortly. Here's the main drums. All right. So we're just gonna go through this mad shit. My thump there, and I'll confess, I sampled Blade Runner. Hey, sue me, Van Jealous. There's a multi-band compressor in that for a little bit of thump, so you can get more high-end clarity. I took the bass out. Oh yeah, and some sex at 3K and some high end. When I'm in queuing percussion and drums, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna look at it in a spectral analyzer. And that's probably cheating, but I just don't care. It looks like this. So that clap has got a great big spike at 1200, and then a whole bunch of not, not much going on. So what I need to do, just so it's gonna clean the mix up to start with, Wow, I didn't take any out at all. Looks like I like that sound. I added a bit of 3K 
I actually added a drop there just to mic it spike through the mix a little more and took out a little nudge at uh, 3.2 just because that can be a bit hurty. The hi-hats, I got rid of everything under 650 and I took a bit of a dip at around about 5.8k just because those hats, they're coming off the modular. So those hats have got a whole bunch going on like, what's that, 2.6 up to about 4 and there's a bit of a spike at 6.7. I just pulled out a whole heap of bass because I don't need that. That's a high pass at 600. I've got a uh, snare drum that I just added some shit to so it pokes through a bit. Something I like doing with the main snare drum is adding a bit of a thump between 120 and 160. This one's 155, about 4 dB, just to give that snare a bit of punch because punch is sexy. We like punch. Bit of highs, bit of mids. That machine loop there, I had to take uh, quite a lot of um, highs out of this because it's got some really bitey parts in it. The rule of thumb with mixing is if you don't need it or if it hurts, get rid of it because it's gonna hurt. But we're gonna get to pain in a minute because we just love pain. And then there's this random thing here. Isn't that great? That's just random modular noise. Once again, took out a pile here and added a bit of shininess at 9K because fuck it. We like shininess, right? More importantly, what I've done is once again, I've added a multiband compressor to that. So without the multiband, it sounds like that. But the multiband brings everything up so it's thumpy and sexy and wahaha. So here's your percussion, and that's basically crazy synth lines. So with these two pieces of cool synth verbiage, as you can see, didn't really do all that much to them. I tried to match them because they're two very different sounds. And then I put multiband on them, I put distortion on them. Wow, very unexciting without it. Yeah, multiband compression, and that's quadrifuzz as well. So what's great about, this is the old version. This quadrifuzz is from like 2005. It's awesome. It's so gritty and shitty. The new quadrifuzz is like, ugh. It's so safe, I hate it. Next thing is the lead sound. So what I've done with this lead sound is not only have I put a, a, high, a low shelf on it, but I've also um, taken some mids out because it sounds kind of cluttered. Then there's two delays going on, one's 70 mil, one's 50, uh, 50 mil. So that's just to spread it out. Then it's compressed, EQ'd a bit and compressed a bit more. The rule of thumb with EQing is, wow, that's awful. That's better. You gotta trust your ears and you've gotta learn where all of these different frequencies are and you've gotta learn what they sound like and you've gotta cross-examine different mixes and, and lift, listen to different mixes and go, yeah, okay, I'm learning what they're doing and why they're doing it. Ah, love those pads. So this is one pad. Beautiful, that's an Emulator 2 sample. Isn't it luscious? Took a bit of bass out. Gave it a bit of mids and took out a, a, a touch at around about 2.1, just so it can work in the mix. And then, sort of vaguely did the opposite on this one. Look at that. Basically kind of the opposite. So they slot together, so when they're talking, you can hear the definition of the two. Then there's this great big crazy thing. It sounds like this. That's a Synclavia sample. Oh my god, I love Synclavia so much. That's once again been very old school uh, multiband compressed, just so you can hear more definition without it. it sounds like this. Bam. When you listen to it alone, it's like, well, you know what? I kind of like the, the normal version better. But the fact of the matter is, the normal version doesn't work in the mix. Yeah, way too many frequencies in there. 
A trick I like to do is when you're listening to a sound in a mix, you pay attention to what you can hear. If there's elements of that sound that when the mix is going, you can't even hear them, just EQ them out. They don't need to be there. And that might not work with acoustic music and rock and roll, but with electronic music, there's so many things going on that have got so many frequencies. It's like fucking crazy. Something else you'll notice here, if we look down here at this one here, at the purple one, you see how it's slightly ramping up? And it's ramping up, and this dude here takes a little while to kick in. It's ramping up, so this one here makes it through the mix. Bam. So I will be doing lots of volume and lots of everything else so you can actually hear everything. We get to these two really important tracks. So this is the side chain. What's going on here? The pads are going through the side chain. And what the side chain is, there's a big kick stipper on it. Now, if you remember, the big kick stipper is this thing here that's going to shape the audio. So on every single beat, here it's doing that. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. It's making it drop to get out of the way of the kick drop. The other thing that's going on is I've got a pretty hard side chain going on here. So every time the vocals come in, so we've got vocals coming in here and they're actually pushing down. So that's the actual volume of the side chain, the entire side chain track, which is basically just the pads. And that's the output. And as you can see, as the vocals are coming in, it's pushing all this stuff down. And the reason you do that is because ultimately those pads are not as important as the vocals. The other one is the bass side chain. And that's just got bass on it. And that bass is, um, Got big kick stepper going on. Yay for big, big kick stepper. And once again, there's side chaining with the vocals. The tougher the empire, the darker the hunger. Every tower will devour it. I'm gonna throw the uh, sub kick, the sub bass, and the main kick in there, and you'll hear. Tougher the So that's the basic gist of mixing, but there's one more thing, and that's the vocals. I feel like I'm getting naked here. The tougher the empire. All right, so this is everything off. The darker the hunger. There I am. Every tower will do. So that's me just recorded with a microphone, compressed a little bit, audio's cleaned up, la la la, straight in there. Tougher the empire. First thing we did is we put a low shelf at 240, and that's pretty dramatic, and a lump at 28. Tougher the empire. So that's to make this voice poke through a bit. Then there's a bit of distortion. Tougher the empire. The darker the And then I compressed it even more. Every time and then I added a DS up because I have a problem with sibilance. So the reason that this particular vocal sound is so distinctive and piercing like that is because the main vocal sound sounds like this. Tougher the empire, the darker the hunger. Isn't that pretty? So what's going on here? You'll notice that there is no effects and a bit of EQ basically to get rid of shit that's kind of aggravating. To get rid of that, it sounds like this. The darker the hunger. Right, so without it. Every tower will devour. With it. Once again, if you play them by themselves, they might actually sound better without the EQing, but once the song's in there, because a lot of the bass line's got a lot of lumps and stuff in here, so getting rid of this stuff here is making room for those other instruments. What is happening here is I put it through the effects unit, and it sounds like sex, and the effects unit compressed the fuck out of it. You can never compress vocals enough, remember that. Then it added chorusing, then it added cloning, then it added harmonizing. So there's basically like eight carls stacked on top of each other, which is a quite a frightening thought, really. Tougher the empire, the darker the hunger. And you'll also hear, every tower will devour. And it added a little bit of a 
uh, distortion as well. But this effects unit has the ability to alter the what it calls gender. So when I cloned myself, I think I added four more Carls in the mix, four more electronic Carls. Some of those clones I dropped the, the gender of, so they're more masculine sounding. And the other ones, I increased the gender, so they're more female. So you'll hear one of them. Tougher the empire, the darker the hunger. You'll hear a high end in there. This vocal is great. It's a really fantastic effect. But the problem is when you play it through shit speakers, it gets lost. So hence, the empire. we're gonna throw that other one in. The darker the hung, where that's nothing, Guy. every tower will devour. And now it's fat and glorious. So there's this really nice balance. And you will notice that this is exactly what I do with the bass and the kick. The bass line has the low subversion, like that, and then, it has the high version. Just bass, just treble. And I do the same thing with the kick drum. So the sub kick, and there's a lot going on in the sub, although you probably can't hear it. And then the defining kick. Bam. Now there's a backing vocal in this one as well. And I did fundamentally the same thing with the backing vocal. Come on now, let's watch over. So I did something really fun here. Oh, that's great. Fuck, I'm so out of tune. I'm exposing myself so hardcore right now. So if you listen to this horrible recording. And afraid while mana let's wow. watch over. Notes. Fuck notes. Oh god, that's terrible. I distorted it. I did not pitch correct this for a reason. So I've got the Johnny Rotten thing going on a bit, but then I put it through the TC, the main effects unit, and I pitch corrected it to fuck. And I also added uh, more clones and more fucking everything. These are the notes that the pitch correcting are actually playing. So they're really hard pitch correcting, but when you mix the two, let's watch over disposable workforce we trust you get this really cool let's watch over us in our disposable workforce we trust really cool wildness and in a song like this you want wildness like so if it's just that low voice it's sexy but it's kind of Lacking the energy. But when you throw that craziness in, it adds all this fucking madness. So the last thing is, once you've actually done the mix and you're happy with it, I put something across the entire mix to double check it. And that is this god awful EQ. So it's gonna sound like this. Oh yeah. That's what it sounds like normally. But with this fucking EQ, it sounds like that. That's awful! But I do that because this is what it sounds like when they play it on a fucking iPad. And when you do this, you're instantly going to hear shit that stands out and sounds like crap. The other thing, I don't think uh, you can sort of see it here. This is a $10 speaker and I will mix the final mix through this. I do most of the mixing on headphones and as the more you play it, you increasingly turn it down because your ears get fatigued. That's an important piece of wisdom. As you mix and as you program and while you're composing it, keep turning your headphones down ever so slightly, like fucking 3 dB every half an hour or so, just so you're, you know, and you'll be able to mix for hours if you do that. Then mix it through your big, beautiful speakers, then put this horrible fucking EQ curve on it. And then even with this horrible EQ curve, play it through your very trusty this didn't cost me anything because I actually pulled it out of a rubbish bin. Anyway, so that is the book of mixing according to Angel Spit. I will probably do another one because there's so much shit here that I skipped over. The moral of the story is if you want to do something different and unique, because face it, you're doing electronic music, which is different and unique. There's no, like a lot of fucking mixing things have like, oh, 
Here is the EQ shape for a fucking dance synthesizer lead. No, fuck that. Don't use it. Or use it and tweak the shit out of it. EQing, man, changes the fuck out of the sound. It really changes it. And the only way you're going to learn is by going, okay, that sort of sounds muddy. If it sounds muddy, like I said before, go to the 400 frequency range because that's where the mud is. And if you listen back to it and you go, mm, it's sort of hurting me a bit. It's sort of hurty frequencies. 2.5 to 5K, that's where the hurt is. Or if you feel it's not very polished, it needs to get more polished. The polish, the air is above 5K. If you feel like it's missing that thump around about 80 to 120 Hertz, that's where the thump is. And if it's missing the subs, that's about 40 to 100. But you have to be careful with your subs. If you don't have speakers that can accurately play the subs back, fucking forget it. You're just going to add heaps of subs and that's going to ruin your mix. Trust me, because most of the energy of the speaker actually goes into replicating frequencies below about 150. So if you're totally out of balance, all of the energy, I'm talking watts, the actual wattage of a speaker is going to go into pumping out these massive waves, which is, is what a sub is. And so it's taking the power away from the mid and top end. And that's why music sounds brittle, because it doesn't have enough power to accurately reproduce what's going on in the top end. And that's why you should get it professionally mastered, because the mastering engineer has got shitty speakers, average speakers, and amazing speakers, and they can reference it across board. And one other really important thing here as well, this awful EQ shape that I do the final mix through, you can hear the kick. And that's really important that in a lot of electronic music, it's this driving sub and the subs way the fuck down here. So when you play it on your damn iPhone, you're not going to hear any sub or any bass. That's why in the kicks and the, uh, and the, and the bass line, there's elements, you know, in around about the, you know, the two to five K area. See, you can hear the kick, Boom. hear it. You can make out the drums, you can hear the vocals. And the best trick in the world is to really get a feel on the mix. Turn it down. Right down. So even when it's low, you can hear that hat, you can hear the vocals. You can hear a bit of blurby, blurby, cheeky, cheeky things. And you can hear the snare, the bass, and the kick drum. With mixing, you've got to do it a few times because you're not going to get it right the first time and you've just got to keep chipping away at it. So I really hope you've enjoyed this. I really hope this has helped you. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the, in the comments below and I will bloody answer them pronto. And thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. You're a fucking legend. So rock and roll and I'll see you soon. I hope you like this song too. I wanted to do something different. I'm always doing something different. But anyway, rock and roll. Talk to you soon.